Uh, my name is Lambros Konomi. <laughs> my name is Geoff, and welcome back to it. That hurt. <laughs> that really did. But welcome back to another episode of Chat GBC. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to have the best time at Goldie Beacom. Um, you know, whether it be relationships with professors, how to get good grades. I can't talk about that. But, um, <laughs> you know, also uh, student organizations, athletics, and, uh, you know, relationships and, and, and things like that. So, yeah. What do you got? So this week, uh, on January 29th, we have National Puzzle Day. So I'm assuming that there will be puzzles available for students to do. And yep. Uh, then Trivia Night on uh, January 31st, 7 p.m. in the Jones Center. Trivia Nights are usually nights where they'll have like, you know, you answer questions, obviously, but you get some sort of, you know, goodies. You definitely get prizes. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, Black History Month starts February 1st. And on the 2nd, the Black Student Union will host a Black Soul Food Dinner where you can join and it's open to everybody. Um, join them. They will have food there. And uh, yeah, eat some soul food, listen to some nice music and enjoy and get to know people. Perfect. That's great. I mean, it's, it's interesting because before coming here, you don't know too much about how the college kind of works. But I think that once I did get here, it felt like we were in a place where there was a lot of different people. And I was very excited to kind of get to know everybody. And I think um, after speaking to uh, one of the commuter students today, I got a Polaroid of him, actually, Diego. He said that, you know, he doesn't spend too much time like at the student lounge or in the cafeteria. He had just recently, only last week, he said he had been there and that was the first time that he'd been there. So I think that, you know, getting that message out there of like, hey, it doesn't matter if you're a commuter or, you know, a, a underclassman, upperclassman, grad student, there, there are resources on campus to do different things and enjoy, you know, different kind of connections that you can make here. And, and that for me was eye-opening because I felt lucky to be here. You know, I felt lucky, but also I felt that nobody really knows about this. You know, like I'll walk on, on uh, right in front of the cafeteria, I'll walk by and I'll see some of the guys, let's say from the team, I'll hear them speaking French or, you know, we got the Swedish boys or, you know, you got the uh, Spanish boys, you know. So that's always been a goldy thing, you know. And for me, who's super interested in languages, that's kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe I, I, I'm, I know somebody who speaks fluent French or, or fluent Spanish that I can learn from as well, you know. And then once it's in the classroom, you know, I know that you've had a lot of good experiences with professors that have helped you kind of give you advice or guide you in, in different ways. And, and that's been my experience, too, because it's like, you know, the professors in a, in a different way. I think in general, Goldie has such a good relationship, like the professors have such a good relationship with the students. I mean, that's like such a, a strength. I remember when I was doing the documentary on like Pat Bueller when she was you know retiring from being a professor, uh, just the amount of stories of prof of students that had a relationship with her and that were impacted by her and that, that she was able to keep up with. And I know that there are so many other professors here who have that. And that's something that like, that is like the biggest value, you know, I think, is to have these people that have been in the, in the industry you're trying to get into or you know, have this knowledge that you're looking for and that they can guide you. From my experience, when I was a student here, before we started Lightning Studio, we saw that there was no photography, no video, no nothing that was really sticking out as like, these are the people trying to tell the stories of the things that are happening on campus. Mm -hmm. And so we started it, we were, you know, we were allowed to. Mm -hmm. We got, not only did we get like the freedom to start it, but the support mm -hmm. from you know, from the higher ups, from specifically, I remember, uh, we, I had a drone and do you have a license for it? <laughs> <laughs> so I had, I had a drone and, mm. um, and I remember I was filming a soccer game mm. and I was like, I it was like the drone battery could only last like 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And I remember like going, went into Chuck's office. He was the Dean of students at the time. And I was like, you know, I was like, I don't know, like, it's cool, but you know, I can't be up there for that long. And he's like, well, how much does like another battery cost? Mm. And you know, and I was like, 
okay, you know, and went and found like what it was. And, and he, you know, he supported it ever since then. And it's always been like grassroots. It's the entrepreneur spirit that we have here. Um, and so like, that's how everything took off with lightning studio is just like, there's nothing here that was like that. Yeah. Well, how about I start it? How about I get some students together? You know, and that was the, the thing is students at GBC wanted to be a part of something. You know, I remember when Shaheen and Arthur started Smart Students, mm. um, it was just the students at GBC all came around to support them and to support that, that yeah. endeavor. And yeah. that's not, I don't think that's a thing that you find at bigger schools mm. necessarily. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because when you were talking about it, I, I, one of my first memories of, um, of Lightning Studio was walking back from practice or something and seeing like uh, Lauren Conway walk by you filming her and then Elijah was dropping the TVs from the <laughs> from the balcony from Miller. That was hilarious. That's the first thing that I remember from like lightning to like seeing that kind of in action, you know, and I was interested by it before coming here. And then once kind of seeing that, I was like, what are they doing? Like, what's going on? It seems so cool. And then that commercial then came out, which was a commercial for smart students, if I remember correctly, that like you can get in touch with uh, the other students on campus and if you have like tvs or old uh, you know coat hangers or whatever it may be that somebody might need for their room once they move in and you've moved out and that kind of build a, a connection maybe old books as well like you can buy and sell so that was that yeah i yeah. remember that and i was like what is going on? like yeah. the tvs were actually real they yeah, dropped yeah. they broke it was hilarious yeah <laughs> yeah and and to the oh, point yeah. with the clubs and organizations too like um you know there's a list of all the ones that exist on, on the website. We'll, we'll show that. Uh, but if I had to do it over again, you know, if I was like student, start a club, mm -hmm. I would get those uh, drifting carts. The drifting? Oh, <laughs> There's the... like these $250 like electric carts you sit in. They're almost like little like. Like GoPro? No, no, a uh, go-kart. They're like go-karts, but they're electric and they're small mm -hmm. and they're not, they're not like... Super fast. Yeah, right? okay. they're, they, they go like 10 miles an hour, maybe. 10? Maybe. in that video, it was like 20 or something. Yeah, maybe it was faster. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would get like four, five, six and start a Goldie Beacom <laughs> Grand Prix. <laughs> Around the campus? Yeah, yeah, we would draw out the lines mm -hmm. of the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it, make you know, it fair and Make it fair, make yeah. it legit, yeah. you know? We'd have to have like practice sessions, qualify, practice sessions. qualifying sessions. They have to learn the track. Oh yeah, qualifying true, true. sessions. Mm -hmm. We'd promote it. Yeah, because we have like a little speed bump behind, uh, so you would have to take that into account. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. You know, we. This is so organized. I'm like, yeah. just do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> um, but things like that, like if there's uh, something there yeah. that you like, a student's like, you know, I want to. What is the recent, most recent one? That has been yes, uh, Micah. Micah has started um, together with other black students on campus. They've started the BSU, which is the Black Student Union, and they they had an interest meeting last semester. And I know that this semester they have a bunch of events planned. Uh, the first one starting on February the second with the Black Soul Food Dinner that they're hosting, and it's going to be in the event center. I'm going to be there, taking some pictures and stuff and video for that as well. Yeah. So that's S really exciting, actually. And. Yeah, those types of things, like, you know, because, like, looking back on, the, like, my college experience at GBC, like, those projects we did, starting up those those uh, uh, different things, mm -hmm. like, those are, like, such vivid memories, and those are such good friendships that you'll have, you know, for the rest of your life. The value of these things, for me, have been that I now know about them and I can utilize them to enrich my experience in college. But if I just sit in my room or if I don't know about the, these things happening, then first of all, I miss out on them. But also I miss uh, not on just the events, but the opportunity to kind of get in touch with different people, you know. And I, I tell this to, to the people on the team that the new guys that come on every year, I tell them, like, listen, enjoy this campus because there's much more going on than you think. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, yes, we're not, you know, Michigan State or we're not some huge school we're not Duke uh, where there's things going on all the time and there's a certain like system in place for things to go on all the time here that's kind of an up-and-coming thing an up-and-coming thing but also from the school side 
like from the staff and the faculty, but also from the students. The students are always doing different things here, you know, uh, with the videos, with photos, with um, I know a lo I know two guys at least that have clothing lines on uh, not necessarily on campus, but they go here and they have their own clothing lines. You know, uh, m when I started here, the uh, Cara from uh, cross country, she was running a uh, tutoring business as well while going to college. You know, and f and that entrepreneurial spirit and mindset was a little bit foreign to me when I came here, and I was surprised, but very positive because it also gave me the belief that like, well, I can do something like that, mm -hmm. or or this is the way that people can do it, and I don't have to feel like I'm young and inexperienced, or um, I don't have my degree yet, or or whatever it may be, those insecurities and those doubts, because other people are are you know hitting the ground running and and not not letting their limitations kind of hold them back instead they're using that as their advantage to learn and to move forward yeah. and that was very inspirational for me as somebody who you know came here and and didn't know anything about the area or about the school itself yeah you know? cuz that's and a college is a great place to test out ideas and watch them fail i mean to learn to live with failure i mean everything that i've tried to do in the last five years has some way or another like failed to meet my hopes and expectations for it mm -hmm. and sh you learn really quickly you know that the only way to make the best of it mm -hmm. is to pick yourself back up and try again and the difference between like learning that here is that there's people there that are going to help you that are going to support you that are that are going to be there to pick you up and help you back up because you know I could I could just go on and on about the list of things. I mean, we're trying to make a movie right now mm -hmm. and it's and it's just been 2 years filled with you know failure, like not being able to meet the expectations and uh and but the momentum continues to build. You keep trying and then you learn mm -hmm. these valuable lessons. Like there's nothing like you know, like this, this podcast, like we've done a couple episodes where it's just like, you know, got to completely <laughs> redo that because of some stupid mistake, mm -hmm. you know? And I've been a filmmaker obsessed with this stuff for like eight years or so. Mm -hmm. Like, and you can get, you can get that far and then make these, these stupid little mistakes and, uh, you know, and then, but, but you have to pick yourself back up again. You have to keep trying. You have to, you know, learn things as you go. Like, I think, you know, that's like, that's like the best advice that I struggle taking is that, you know, if you, if you want to start something, if you want to do something, you have to literally just do it. Like with photography, you know, if you want to be a photographer, if you want to learn photography, the only way to learn is like to take photos, yeah. to learn the way the light works, to learn composition, to learn how to work with a subject uh, you know, and it's gonna suck. Your first photos are gonna suck. Guilty as charged. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yours, that's another thing of being at, mm. at college is you've learned to become a professional. You're a professional photographer now and you weren't like a year or so ago, you <laughs> no, know? I was not. And, uh, and that's like the, that's, yeah, that's, um, yeah. Is, is so different, I think, from what I, what I guess I expected to learn coming in here, you know, um, Goldie being a business school, it has people that are businesses, you know, you have different professors who have experience from industry, but also who have had their own businesses. And that kind of uh, rapport with those professors can really guide you through that process. And to know that somebody else has gone through it and prevailed, even because even through failures, let's say, um, that's what's that's what can give you the courage to do it. Because I didn't want, or I mean, I wanted to take pictures, but as a fun thing to do because I liked how like the Polaroids look, for example. Because I was like, oh, I wish I could kind of save those moments that I see, you know, with my friends or from a, you know, a, a night where we're all together and having a great time, how do I save those? You know, I can't save them in my head. I mean, I can, but they fade, you know? So this was just a, a way to do that. And, and I think that, you know, being here, learning from you, looking at how you do things, how Senya does things, and then all these new people who have come on and, and also have expressed their 
they want to to take on photography and 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 they have their own perspective and we're kind of like oh that looks cool and we kind of learn from each other and 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 develop as we go you know and and that i don't know where else i would get that yeah you know um at least you know because I, I i have gone to be so close to people here you know to to interact with them to talk to them through different projects or by having class with them you know and, and i think that if i didn't know how the environment here works i would have missed out on on that experience you know I'm still here because I enjoy being here. And I know that even, you know, I was talking to one of the, um, of the Swedish guys on the team uh, last year and he was saying like, this place, the social aspect of it is what makes me want to keep being here and to make the best of this experience and to, you know, um, n like not just go to class and, and not know anything else that's going on. Like just today uh, we had, um, Maybe I shouldn't say today, but <laughs> just today we had the donuts with the dean, you know, and, and a bunch of people came out, got donuts, and we were standing re like under the little like uh, thing, like the so that we wouldn't get rained on. But people were there waiting to get donuts, and conversation started. I talked to a, uh, a commuter that I didn't know before, Diego. I took a Polaroid of him. I'm gonna include it on the project. He he wrote um, "Viva la vida," "Viva la vida," yes, "Live your life." So. You know, and, and just that, that right there, I, I mean, yes, some people may be shy and that's okay. You can be shy, it's no problem. Um, but I think we miss out a little bit on, on, that, on that expansion of our, of our view if we don't talk to people, you know? Yeah, if we don't, like, try to get involved or, yeah. you know, even if it's, like, it doesn't have to be, like, a college thing. Mm. It could be, it happens here. Yeah. It could be, like, Playing video games with your friends, yeah. you know, it could be like, like, a, like you said, trips to Wawa, like <laughs> parties. Wawa. I mean, yes. par the parties, like mm. those were always such a great, like, I remember some of my favorite memories of things that I've taken from Goldie mm. are the partying late night with students from around the world mm. and just hearing the stories of, like, I'll never forget this memory of like Fernando rolling his own cigarette, telling me, you have to come to Madrid. Yeah, yeah. The parties are no nothing like Madrid. You have to come. <laughs> and he's like, you know, mm. and, and yeah. just like uh, <laughs> all of those things. And, you know, and then as well, like uh, we mentioned, I mean, I, you know, these students that you meet here, mm. the students that you meet in college, there's friends that you make in college mm. because you're so close with them, because you live with them, because you spend so much time with them, they become like some of the best friends, you know? Mm. Like me and you, not only are we collaborators, but we're friends. You're a groomsman at my wedding, yes. you know, <laughs> and I had many other college friends mm -hmm. come and that's like, uh, you know, those are the, those are the types of relationships and especially at Goldie where they're just, they're worldwide, you know, like I, I brought up the point about like going on the snap map <laughs> and you could see like all the many faces that are across the world, you mm -hmm. know, that are your friends that you've made here at Goldie. Yeah. Yeah, I know, uh, and it's funny that you mentioned Fernando because I had a similar thing with his uh, little brother uh, Alejandro a couple of years after that, and we were talking about I think it was we were studying for a class together or something, and you know at some point we were gonna maybe say goodbye. I, I don't remember when he graduated. He said to me like you know that this experience kind of we have homes now all over the world. You know, um, I, I can go to his place in Madrid. He can come to me in Sweden. He can come to Greece if he wants to. He can come to Albania too. I don't mind. That'd be great, you know. So yeah, it would be, and that's that's I think the beauty of it. The the real the real value of it. The real, you know, the thing that I will never forget. You know. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, trying to trying to connect this with some other things too. Some other like how to make you know how to have a how to have a. Um, good time here like we have so many athletic teams mm. so many s sports teams that are like yeah, I think like 13 NCAA teams maybe 14 now with the esports yeah and like there's we have so many good memories then of like cheering on for different teams you know like coming going and, and like I remember watching Corey Tate on the basketball team yeah. like it was like electric there in the gym and I'm sure that there's there's like so much so many more yeah. instances of that yeah. 
I never saw that guy. I think I think he only missed one free throw for two years that I saw him play. <laughs> <laughs> one, all the other ones he made, it was ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I mean, especially when there's like a big turnout and people come, like it it gets loud in that gym. Yeah. Usually when we play Wilmington, but it can get loud in other other games too. And it's especially when alum, alumni come out and and the other teams like sh- support uh, sport basketball or or go to the other games. It's then you feel part of something. Yeah. You know. Speaking of Wilmington, how yes. about that sweep? Oof. Basketball, men's and women's <laughs> basketball sweeping Wilmington. <laughs> that was good. Boom, 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 three, threes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, Rory with those. Rory made like nine threes. That was bro. crazy, dude. Crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the men did too. Oof. Yeah. I think they, they did well as well. They won. So yeah. They did well. When um. The rivalry with Wilmington is strong because I, you know, <laughs> when, when I played baseball the first year, you know, they showed up to our field uh-huh. with like a, a, how do you say it? Like a, like a bus or entourage? Entourage yeah. of cars. It was really? like t- okay. 15 to 20 cars. Intimidation tactics. You know, just <laughs> all at once just rolled into our, our parking lot. <laughs> well, like Ed Doyle? At, yeah. Doyle, yeah. But, um, they may have gotten the better of us that year, but mm. I know our baseball team <laughs> is kicking is kicking <laughs> now. Yes, they're, they're ranked um, fourth. Yeah, fourth in the. Um, so they were ranked with like St. Francis and uh, oh sorry not Franklin Pierce sorry, Franklin Pierce and a couple other schools. I think they were fourth though, uh, and then and Wilmington was, you know, considerably lower on that rank, <laughs> but it wasn't like CACC schools. It was more like regional school. I think it was a regional poll. A yeah. preseason regional poll. Yeah. It is. Uh, don't don't want to throw too much shit. No, I was like, I was a little bit <laughs> stressful to talk trash when you have no control over the outcome. Yeah. You know? Yeah, true, true. So you boys better, and girls better back us up. Yeah, please. Because yeah, this on. is, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is like motivation, as yes. they say. Yes. But those types of rivalries, is, it's cool, like, mm. that that's building over time, you know, even with more sports. Like, we've mentioned with esports. Mm. Like, imagine, you know. Of Wilmington versus Goldie Esports, yeah. yeah, or imagine racing them in the in the in, in the, the GBC thing? Grand Prix. Yeah. <laughs> F one <laughs> is coming to Goldie. F one, F sixteen, maybe. Wait, Some careful! That might be a. That might be a thing. Yeah. No, that might be like a. An actual bomber plane. Oh. <laughs> might have to cut that. Cut! Cut that F-16. now. F sixteen. Oh uh, yeah. You know, uh, oh, Americans yeah. in their <laughs> weaponry. <laughs> I think it's oh, F14. need to do some serious editing to this I think, <laughs> I think it's F-14 from Top Gun. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. F-14 Tomcat. Yeah. yeah. Not for Tom Cruise. But, but yeah, to the point of the athletics, like the, the journey you go with your teammates, mm. you know, that, those become yeah. your brothers, basically, your sisters. Yeah. You know, um, I was, I think I was talking to one of the guys and I told him, like, you will that something that he wanted to happen would only happen after he had been with them like in the trenches let's say like you know struggling together you know especially during the the difficult times you know like preseason when we're running a lot and nobody's having a good time because we're not touching a ball basically for a little while we're just running you know and that kind of you need to kind of go through that period and that kind of makes that bond stronger you know i remember going to an away game far away my freshman year and sitting and talking to pistol uh, Nicolas Jaramillo, who we <laughs> call Pistol, uh, and just talking to him, like me and him would never speak otherwise, like we would never talk, but we sat there together and talked about like his, you know, upbringing in Colombia, and I like knew Colombia, you know, like oh yeah, Colombia is a country in South America, but from his experience, now I have a picture of what Colombia looked like and what it smells like, what it tastes like, you know, he talked about the food, he talked about his experiences there you know, with his family and his friends and, and how it was for him to come to America. So just that, like, opens up your world. And now, you know, if he is in Colombia at some point, I'll look at him on the snap map probably. Yeah. But but just in my mind, the world kind of ma- became bigger in the, uh, just because of that. Yeah. Uh, no, exactly. <laughs> and um, I forgot where I wanted to go from there. Can I say something on the on the rivalry thing? Yeah. Yeah. So I talked to, or I don't know if it was me. Or I think it was somebody told me that they had talked to someone from Wilmington, like from the soccer team of Wilmington, because uh, we got uh, a transfer over. Uh, Py came over to play for us, 
this his last year and he said there's no rivalry really from their side because they've been beating us for like a while so they don't <laughs> they don't care about the game against us we care because we want to beat them but they don't see it as like that big of a deal because they just beat us every time <laughs> and yeah. that was the soccer team yes that's the soccer team we haven't won against them Bro, in so long. if that's not enough motivation for no, GBC's is, soccer yeah. team to get it together, you know? Get it together, bro. For sure. We are getting it together. We're, we're, building. we're building. When was the last time that Wilmington won the CACC championship? Um, it's been a long time. I don't think they won it, actually. They always, they always get to, uh, like, they'll be top four or wi within that. Like, they'll be the top four team, so they'll host the playoff match, but they will never, like, actually win it you know what mm. i mean uh, but because they have always a very strong record they usually get the at large bid to get to nationals anyway yeah uh, but they struggle in playoff time they like they lose because i mean there's pressure there is you know it's a one-off game mm -hmm. they lose um, yeah but yeah. they've never they haven't i don't won. think they've ever they, won at least in soccer they have yeah and maybe we, maybe a long time we ago. could be wrong but we at least i know that since 2017 yeah. since 2017 when only goldie and post have won uh, and maybe like Georgian Court, I think, or Jefferson. No, Jefferson. Georgian Court has won. Yeah. Fact check. Fact we check. Need that, a fact check. Please. Yeah, but, but Goldie has I'm won. I'm just making more, that point. Yeah. That. More championships in soccer than Wilmington the last since 2017. Yeah. Six years. Yeah. That's normally how that works. You, you don't you don't talk about the rivalry <laughs> like that unless you've you know. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe they've beaten us, but. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. the year that uh, the guys won in 2017, the regular season game, Wilmington won, uh, I think 2-1 maybe or something. And then, but they didn't play them in the playoffs because they got eliminated by another team. And then the final was Goldie against uh, Jefferson, that Goldie won 2-1. Yeah. La shout out Nicholas Ladera and Shaheen Agrin. That was the most unbelievable goal I've seen in my life. Yeah, it was, a l it was amazing. Man. I, I remember watching it on the documentary. And where, where I'm like, oh my yeah, God. yeah, yeah, you can hear yeah, your voice. Did I say yeah. the F word there? No, or? I don't think so. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Because <laughs> I'm like running with the phone, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, that was a goal, though. But yeah, Shaheen on the wing, crossover, crossover, and then he takes it down, crosses it, and Ladera just sneaks in there, heel kick or heel tap really was yeah, a heel yeah. tap it was a behind spinning back. back heel like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. behind the back um, like, just like like a professional player would do like it because that move isn't just like a move that anybody can do because he could have done it normally you know just side of the foot palm in but he had that flair to it that kind of put the uh, the defenders off as well yeah it was great great goal yeah. great goal but about the Wilmington rivalry, yeah. you know, healthy, healthy competition. Healthy competition, you know? You know? Like, I mean, they're across town or 20 minutes away, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> we'll see. Oh, do you think basketball could see them in the playoffs? Uh, possibly, yes. Uh, but the men and women, you know, the men have been doing very, very yeah, well. Yeah. I think they're like the top seed or top two seeds in That's the south yeah. and basketball obviously won against them so maybe they'll see them in the playoffs but back to like how to have a good time specifically at, at gbc yeah. what are some other ways that you've like you know not i guess not like made the best of it but mm. um, um well when i came we had a barbecue together with all the students that were on campus uh, we put some money together and we went to like Walmart to get food and then we cooked it on campus. Uh, it was like in August, so it was quite warm and everybody came out, had a great time. And we did that again uh, in 2022 with uh, Johan and Patrick uh, from the team. We kind of, you know, because we knew how to cook. Patrick had a car. We were like, hey, let's make some food. Let's invite people. I let's just love that. <laughs> you knew how to cook. Patrick had a car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how it is. What's his name had fifteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, literally, I was asking the different people who I knew were going to be on campus to like uh, pitch in with five dollars each, and they were very, uh, you know, uh, gracious to do that. So we went to Aldi, got a bunch of food, came back. Johan did his thing. I cooked some of uh, the the stuff that my mom used to make, and uh, Pat helped us out with like organizing and obviously driving. Thank you so much, Pat. And. Uh, um, yeah, so we just put it, put it like on it. And I asked Tatiana, hey, can I get a table from somewhere? She was like, yeah, sure. So I got a table, put actually two tables, put them together. We got sodas, 
we got the food plates uh, you know utensils everything and just told people that hey we're gonna be outside of franta with homemade food if you want because the cafeteria wasn't open at the time because it would open i think when, once classes would start and whoever's on campus is invited come on if you have food that you want to bring i know the softball girls i remember they brought this um chicken buffalo buffalo dip buffalo dip for chips and i had never tried it before and i was like scared to try it but they were like no no, it's good it's good uh and they brought like wiffle ball and people brought uno cards and everybody's kind of getting to know each other um so it was really like a cool thing and it wasn't like a student it wasn't like a you know the campus obviously facilitated it because i asked tatiana for the tables and you know i was allowed to do it because they could have just said no you know, but they, they support this kind of initiative from students. And I think the students themselves enjoy, you know, when there's things going on both by the college and also student-led or student-driven things. And and that can really, you know, make it. So if, if anybody, like, has an idea about something or, um, or something that they want to do, I'm sure that if they ask for help, that will be provided here. That will be given by other fellow students, but also by the, yeah. you know, the school. Yeah, because you know staff can only do so much to facilitate a lot of these things but students are the heartbeat of mm. the campus life and they know best like what you know what they want yeah. and and I, if i remember correctly um when we were starting student organizations there was like a budget allocated per mm. semester and you could also like raise money mm-hmm. and um there used to be like a matching program i don't know the current situation now but I'm sure, you know, you go to student affairs, you walk up and you're like, hey, I want to start uh, an organization, a club, mm. you know, whatever it could be, yeah. you know, it could be racing club. I'll be your advisor. If you want to start the racing club, I'll be the advisor <laughs> for that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, and then like, how do I get started? And mm. they're, you know, I'm sure that they're going to like, yeah you know help you out figure and and help you get started and um even with volunteering uh i remember because i was going to stay here the summer of 2022 i knew that i was going to be here and i was going to take summer classes so i but i knew that i was going to have a lot of time on my hands so i went to sulakshmi and i said hey i would like to volunteer so she said yeah sure let's go to the boys and girls club uh in wilmington she would drive me there would be there for a couple hours every week and usually on Fridays, and I would sit like there with the kids, and um, I brought some drawings some time, one time, and we would draw with the kids a little bit because they wanted to do some drawings. And then um, I showed she liked me some other drawings that I had done before, and she said, "Well, what if you do like murals for the boys and girls club?" And I said, "Sure, <laughs> why not?" So we spoke to Michael, the director, and he was very kind and and generous with his time and resources to say yeah sure let's you know do some stuff and uh, i did in total i've done four murals for them um and one of them was for their alumni who is now in the nba he plays for the los angeles clippers his name is busy bones or bones highland and he used to play there when he was like 13 years old i think or something like that uh and now obviously he's in the nba so it's a big thing and um and i did a mural for him there right next to the basketball court where he used to play and when we unveiled it uh, it was also when he was visiting the boys and girls club and there were so many kids there to see him and he was there with his mother and he's like had like a whole entourage of people coming with him and he was so like kind to spend his time with the kids play basketball with them and 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 then uh what i found out later because i saw him after after he had like finished uh, you know being with the kids and playing basketball with them i saw like he looked like he looked a little bit tired you know because he had i think it was like two hours and then I, uh, like I, I, I think someone, I, maybe Sulakshmi told me that he was going to go to other um, community uh, centers uh, around Wilmington to also play like basketball with the kids and spend time with them. So I'm like, oh, this guy's going to do this whole day, you know. So that, you know, that was very good of him to do that, to spend time with the kids. So, and, yeah. and, and yeah, he signed my mural too. So it was good. <laughs> it was cool for me. Yeah. No, the mural was amazing. And Thank that's you. such a, you got to do one here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah. But, I'm sketching uh, some stuff. Yeah. No, that is it, just amazing. And yeah, it's type, those types of opportunities, like, you know, when, when um we started live streaming the soccer games Mm. that was an idea that was brought up by jeremy and lorenzo Mm. and you know jeremy was busy with all these other things and lorenzo was playing in the game so he couldn't do it so when we were it came at the same time as starting lightning studio 
So like, I remember figuring out all the things we need with Jeremy, like, and he was like going, he got like, you know, the MacBook that you need, the streaming software, yeah. um, you know, the cable, the stuff to right. protect the cable. Yeah, yeah. And we were just winging it, figuring things out like, mm. like that. And, yeah. and, uh, and that's like, you know, such the, the benefit, like a lot of things aren't as already established here, mm. but that's why we're you know, in business school. That's mm. why, you know, we're here uh, we're trying to, to lift up entrepreneurs is to give them, give students those opportunities to learn how to start your own thing, learn how to get involved in other people's things and help them. Because that's another thing. Like, you know, when, when I was getting started in filmmaking, the advice was help other people make their films. Mm. They're going to make, they're going to help you make yours, you know, mm. but you're going to learn so much from doing that, from like helping others. You know, you're going to learn the things that they do well, the things that they don't really do well, that you think you like, you would apply to this, mm. your own thing differently. And, and that there's just so many opportunities yeah. here for things like that. Yeah. yeah, I know that the the live stream thing with the games, obviously, because then the VMs were put on YouTube. It was good because now the guys could make like highlight tapes of themselves playing, and parents could watch. I know my dad would stay up uh, and watch our games, um, especially when I scored a goal. Uh, he watched it and he saw it and people from home saw it so it was it was really good and it was good live stream too like you could see the whole field it was good for like the team as analysis to use to see what had happened the game before and but mostly for the parents to be able to see it and I remember this as well so Ethan's dad came over to um, my first actually CACC game here Ethan's dad was here Ethan scored an amazing goal and he just ran over to his dad that was here. And that was amazing. Yeah. Like, like, unbelievable moment. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, that yeah, that was amazing. Um, and that was caught on camera because, yeah. we, you know, you had started that thing. Of, yeah. of the and games. a little bit of, like, the failure side of that, too, is we couldn't. We really wanted to do audio, yeah. but we couldn't from where we were <laughs> because the parents of yeah. both teams were just talking yeah. mad <laughs> about, like, other players on the field, <laughs> you know, and like so, which is not allowed by CACC regulations, <laughs> <laughs> but encouraged. No, <laughs> um, yeah, no, just not while you're trying to live stream. Yeah, no, but sure. um, but so you you have to learn, like, oh, you got to mute that. It's almost that thing of uh, in Harry Potter they say it where Hermione Hermione says something to Ron about how in the fourth one when all the other schools like came to visit Hogwarts and to do the whole like competition thing. Um, the Goblet of Fire, I think it was. Uh, Hermione says this whole thing is about international cooperation. You know, like uh, friends, making friends, making connections, learning different things, you know, and using that to kind of move forward in your life and, and, and pursue the things that you want to pursue, but also understand that there's a bigger world out there than maybe you were aware of before. You yeah. Know? And that can enrich your experience. You know, I remember going to uh, the American girls my sophomore year, they had their room, and the, the girls' room was always looked really nice because they decorate them a lot, and, and that's a good thing, but they had this huge like uh, banner on their wall that was like a whole text about how to, uh, you know, maybe you have a paper due tomorrow, but, you know, or a test or something, but don't uh, neglect the time with your friends. Don't neglect the time to make new friends you know, and to really enjoy this moment in your life and this part in your life. And, and of course, you know, do your papers, do your, do your homework, go to, go to class and be responsible, but don't neglect the other side either because you need to find a good balance between that to really enjoy your experience so you don't look back at it with regret and um, see college for what it can be and what you can make it be, you know, make it yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was bad, sorry. That was cheesy. We can cut that up. But, um, um, and achieve greater. I'm just going to rattle off a bunch of slogans. Become. Become greater. Okay. I, love, ooh, I like that. I like that. Achieve um, greater, become greater. Yeah. To that point, too, about, like, you know, just the overwhelming. Because, like, as, as we're saying, you should start new things. I'm sure a lot of students already have a lot of responsibility going on. And I remember mm. when, you know, my senior year was – the last year that Gary Wirt was the president here, we had a like a group meeting with him with like some of the student leaders on campus. And remember him saying like, you know, like us talking about like, oh, there's a lot going on. Sometimes we, we you know, feel overwhelmed, this or that mm -hmm. about um, 
you know, managing classes, trying to, you know, figure out what to do with your life, uh, organization, athletics. And I remember him saying like, uh, you know, college is supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be this phase where you figure out what your direction, Mm. you know, and there's no pressure. It took me longer than, than that, you know, to like figure out the direction I wanted to go. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's supposed to be, you know, challenging. And that, and that's like, you know, the point. And another good story with, with, with Gary Wirt was, um, we had this, I don't, I was a student at the time, so I can't remember the name. It was like the advisory board of the school. And I remember it was like people from representing different areas Mm -hmm. at the college were there and, and, uh, it, we were in the Boggs boardroom mm. and there was like maybe 20, 30 people <sighs> could have been like 20 people. Yeah. It was very, cause we're all sitting there with the president and everyone's letting them know what, letting him know like what their area is doing. Mm-hmm. Chuck brought me in and he's like, you know, you're going to talk a little bit about what the students are doing. Mm. And I was like, all right. So it's like goes around the circle, you know, and everybody's like, you know, very, very delivering their presentations very well. And, you know, and, and I go and I'm like, yeah, so the students are, and he's like, louder. <laughs> <laughs> you just and catch I was up? like, what? <laughs> and uh, like ever since then, um, it was like the time my lawyer pulled my hands out of my pockets. No, that's a story for another time. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I was like, ever since then, mm. well, I still probably sometimes talk too quiet in certain settings, but ever since then, you know, I'll never forget that moment. Mm. And I'll never forget being in, the, in that type of setting. And those are the types of, like, even... Even working with people as a, you know, like collaborating, Mm -hmm. you know, you learn so much about that, about how to deal with, with those types of like, like politics and and collaboration and Mm -hmm. in, you know, just getting worked on. But, um, this is really that place to learn. Yeah. I know that a lot of our, um, or at least the alumni that I'm in contact with, I know that through their experiences here and, you know, they, I think the two specifically that I'm thinking of is uh, Arthur, uh, Manu, and also actually uh, Juana, because they all, I think that all three of them work in project management now. And I think their experience at GBC, you know, I think Juana was an RA, uh, Arthur was, uh, if not a captain, definitely a leader on the soccer team and maybe a captain at some point during his time. I don't think he was a captain, but he was definitely a, yeah, yeah. a voice and a leader. He for was sure. definitely, there was a bunch of captains that yeah. year, basically. Yeah, to be but. fair. Uh, and... Yeah, and obviously doing smart students and Upendo, and I know Juana had her um, the the custom ma- custom made cups that she used to make, and I think she still does. I think I'm not sure. We'll have to check with it. But uh, yeah, th- that whole kind of learning how to deal with people and that that kind of has formed them towards their career now and what they're doing now, and they're very successful at it too. So you know, they're working for I know Arthur and Manu are in Germany working for companies, and uh, Juana is working for SAP. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, you know, the experiences here just make it better than, than just going to class and doing, a, let's say. A yeah, I guess that's the point we're trying to make is that college is so much more than just going to class. Mm. Um, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> you got to go to class. You yeah. got to. And you, yeah. there's a lot of things that you can learn in the classroom. And one day we'll have somebody on that can talk about those things. <laughs> I can't. One day. <laughs> I can't. Um, mm. And I'm more of an advocate for what you learn outside of mm. the classroom. I mean, because, listen, we don't have a film program here. Mm. You know? There's no video, media, nothing. Mm. Like, I, we learn. I, like, we learn. I taught myself how to do it mm-hmm. with YouTube and with just the opportunities to point a camera at people. Mm. You know, like, I learned that here. And then they hired me to do it and I've learned even more like what I've learned in the last year or two being able to you know learn cinematography try to make even more professional videos like I wouldn't have been able to do it without Goldie you know of course without without just all the creative endeavors we've done with you like you know and to say that I've learned how to make films at a school that's not a film school (laughs) you know but it's a business school. It's yeah. an entrepreneur, and a, f- a film is a business. Basically, yeah. filmmaking is just—it's it's very similar. Yeah. You know, and so. Yeah. 
uh, there's a quote from a movie from 96, I think, where there's uh, two restaurants. One restaurant's over here, one over here. One gets all the business, one doesn't. And the two owners meet and talk, and the one that doesn't get business at all is a chef, very good chef from Italy. He knows everything there is to know about food. And the other one is owned by a businessman. So they talk, and the chef asks the businessman, hey, why... Why am I not getting like enough clients? Why am I? Why are you getting everything? What is it that you do? You're, I've seen your food; it's not as good as mine. I'm I'm a chef. I know how to cook, and he's like, because you are a chef, you forget to be a businessman. Means, I'm a businessman. He said, I am whatever I need to be to get clients in, like that kind of know-how that maybe the chef didn't have, or mm-hmm. a certain a savvy about you know putting yourself out there and pushing uh pushing the product and and being more you know open towards something new to come from outside and then there's a scene later where the chef prepares a meal for the for for a couple that come in and the couple asks for something that wasn't on the menu something that perhaps the chef deemed not um, appropriate for that type of dish for example like a side of meatballs or whatever it may have been and uh, he's like well th- that doesn't go with this and that but the businessman would just say yes of course i can accommodate you to what you need to to be accommodated by and and i think that kind of um those two kind of have to merge in some way to get the best out of both you know so that you can do the 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 chef can make the, his really good things but he can know how to present them in in the way so that they are uh prov- so that they can provide the best value for his clients let's say yeah example. that is such a good story <laughs> we can cut it out <laughs> like no it is I, uh, I side with the chef still no, I, I completely understand, but he wasn't making yeah. anything. And, and because the thing is that he he did he was a chef, right? But he maybe neglected the business side of it yeah. in, in some sense. And if you neglect the business side of it, then the business will not allow you to be a chef. That's no. literally mm-hmm. what is the conversation in the film industry. Mm. You have producers, Hollywood wants to make the movies they know are going to make money. Yeah. But a lot of times you see that they don't have the heart the artistic spirit the direction you know they don't yeah yeah. Yeah. and so but you're right you have to figure out if you're gonna be successful doing it Mm. you and and let you know like you have to figure out and that's i guess my challenge because Mm. it's like we've just been making movies quietly yeah you know like short films quietly Mm. and not doing like i remember i i saw an advice that was like you have to put just as much effort in sharing your film than you did making it yeah. and i think like oh my god like yeah. but that's the truth and that and when you look at like budgets for marketing yeah. the marketing budget yeah. is the film budget basically yeah. you know um so and the marketing companies a lot of time are the ones that green light the hollywood films mm. that's mm. why i'm not in <laughs> there working there mm. we're independent filmmakers independent yeah i mean there there must be some sort of um middle ground though you yeah know? Because otherwise there wouldn't be make films. one yeah. so good, <laughs> yeah. you know. Like I remember, I I read this book that really kind of helped with the th- with me like learning some of these things. It I guess it really hasn't paid off yet, but uh, it was a book called um, "Be So Good They They can't, can't Ignore they, You." They can't ignore you. Yeah, be so good they can't ignore you. Mm. Um, and and yeah, it's basically just about, yeah. but it's still. You know, I mean, I'm not so good that they can't ignore me, <laughs> but we're getting there. No, I was like thinking about that. I was like, uh, yeah, wait, yeah. they're yeah. still ignoring me. <laughs> uh, but uh, th- that's funny, man. Yeah, but that's good, man. Uh, that was a really good. Yeah. That was a really I good story. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so, but a friend of mine actually, he told me that same title of that book. He kind of said the same thing to me. I was back in Sweden, and he was telling me we were kind of playing for the. Um, the team below the f- the first team where you get to, you know to be like a professional let's say and i told him like you know I, in that moment i was not you know too happy about the situation i was like well I w- i'm playing here i'm doing good but i want to play on the next level and he's like well if you're outstanding then they like they can't stop you you know yeah. and even if even if that were to not work out if you are outstanding you can make it work by yourself you know you can figure out a way to make it somewhere else or something different where, you know, I think sometimes uh, a rejection or a, 
you know a speed bump or a bump in the road yeah. however the expression is um it's not supposed to be there to stop you it's supposed to be there to maybe test you to test how to test your resolve how how much do you believe that you can do it and and sometimes you know i was i was talking to a friend of mine about this where when i say to a friend that might be in a difficult situation that like hey we'll figure it out you know we'll, we'll help each other we'll figure it out and i feel so confident when i say that i feel like we're actually going to do it but when i say when i'm by myself you know in my room and and struggling with something some homework or maybe i'm late with an assignment so sorry um when i say to myself i'll figure it out it's a lot i don't believe it yeah. it's a lot harder because but when you say to someone else it's easier to project that confidence and make them think that you know everything's going to be okay but when you say it to yourself it's a lot harder yeah you know it's a lot harder to to tell yourself that you're confident so it's easier yeah. to act confident with somebody else yeah it's like sometimes i wish somebody would just grab me and be like you can do it just do it like mm -hmm. get up and do it but you know you've been that person for me like all the shorts we've done you know you like you believe in it Xenia believes in me you know and so you you yeah you can you keep going on yeah. but yeah i love that let's uh let's go to polaroid of the day harry's polaroid, polaroid, polaroid of the day, of the day. <laughs> uh today's gonna be a double feature actually um with two polaroids i wanted to show these two uh, because they touch on both the topics that we have spoken about today um i'll take a picture of them this time but yeah yeah, yeah. um so it's um it's two girls on both both pictures and one of them says uh it's written in spanish uh la amistad vale más que el oro which um from a rough uh, not so good spanish that i have means um means friendship is more valuable than gold uh, and i think that stands true and th the friendships that definitely we develop here and on campus are you know life changing for for us and that those examples happen they happen every day and they have happened and they will keep happening at gold you know and the second one is actually written in italian uh by the these two italian girls that we have on campus and they wrote uh, con il dolore si diventa forti and i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly uh but uh what they what they told me it means is um with pain uh, also comes strength and i think that's you know kind of sums up both things that yeah we're, we're that's some, those both sum up the whole podcast did yeah. you just uh, like that was weirdly <laughs> that was weird yeah. that was good uh right well this was interesting <laughs> we'll see how this one turns out uh if we've recorded sound and audio no right. we've got all those <laughs> got things this time <laughs> now it's just the quality of the podcast yes. is what uh yeah. did people listen yes. no but that's okay <laughs> With smart students, I can get 10 TVs for the price of one. Ah, oh, thanks bro. I got nine more of these on the way. What is smart students? Well, we find whatever you're looking for in your campus. Whether it be cheap textbooks or TV for your new apartment, we got you. Anything is possible when you're a smart student. Would you stop?